Hello there escapers, my name is Xenobilius and today is Ninja Week. There are a huge number of updates to cover, similar to last week, although arguably the biggest update of them all is the surprising yet long overdue update to the Hex Hunter Bird to buff it further. So I've made a ton of videos, well not ton, I think I made two videos, two pretty long and pretty detailed videos on the Hex Hunter Bird. Back when it was updated, what, in mid-January or something? It's almost been three months since that. And now they've finally brought out the update to it. And I'm just going to briefly touch on the update to give you guys a taster of a video I'm planning for later on, which will go into much more detail on this update. But this should give you a good indication. So what have they done? They've basically increased the damage output of the Hex Hunter Bow from a 10% damage increase to a 12.5% damage increase against monsters that are weak to magic. Previously, there was some kind of affinity boost, which was unknown but really small, against monsters that were weak to arrows, but now that has been converted into a flat 10% hit chance boost against all monsters that are weak to magic. So double whammy there. Uh, the most significant is probably the accuracy boost, but the damage boost from 10 to 12.5% is also significant and it has repercussions in the DPS comparison between tier 90 Hex Hunter and tier 92. So you can easily test this out for yourself by deploying a magic dummy. So I'm just going to do that quickly to show you guys. Uh, select a weakness, none. Uh, the same as me, doesn't really matter. And just go and you can see that if you hover your mouse over your target there is a symbol which says that your damage against this monster is increased by 12.5%. Unfortunately there is no such thing for a hit chance boost. There will be if there was if it was an affinity boost but it's a flat hit chance boost so that doesn't show up here but you can select min max hit to see the effect of this increased boost. There are a number of calculations you can do, but if you select, say, max hit mode, you drop a snipe. So quickly drop a snipe there, see how much it hits, and then compare it with, say, Ascensions or a Noxious Longbow and snipe with that. You'll see that it actually hits more than those for obvious reasons because of this boost against magic targets. This is a magic dummy, of course. So, yeah, I've done a bunch of calculations, a bit of a taste of you guys. Here you go. So, with the following assumptions, you can see that if we assume that with a tier 92 weapon, i.e. the SGB, you have a 100% hit chance, just use that as the base case, then you can go backwards from there and calculate the hit chances. You can also calculate your damage rating, and uh, all these can be calculated based on assumptions I've shown here. So, Desolation Curse... 118 base levels boosted to 130 with the desolation curse your tier of weapon your jewelry or ability bonus from other items which is 235 in my case and i think that's pretty much it yeah so you can calculate all these things based on that and it turns out that if you're fighting a monster where you either just about have a hundred percent hit chance even with the most accurate weapon which is a tier 92 and you use the tier 90 weapon, the Noxious Longbow or Ascensions as the base case, you can see that the Hex Hunter Bow has a slightly lower hit chance by 0.93% but a much higher damage rating by a whopping 5%, 4.92%. That is very, very significant guys. If you compare that with a T92 weapon, i.e. the SGB, it only has a 1.35% damage increase over the tier 90 weapons damage rating. The hit chance of course suffers because even despite this hit chance bonus of 10% it's still not good enough to catch up with the tier 90 let alone the tier 92. So however when you combine the two you can see very very clearly that the total DPS of the Mage Hex Hunter Bow is still very very slightly higher than the total DPS of an SGB by a very small amount, 0.06%, but it's still there nevertheless for you to see. Now, this is assuming, of course, the worst case scenario where your hit chances never get to 100%. Obviously, if your hit chances are at 100% against whatever monster you're fighting, then it's quite clear that hit chances do not play a role and you're simply looking at the difference in damage ratings. And when this is the case, you can see that the Hex Hunter Bow against targets that it's affected by is much better. 5% DPS increase versus 1.4%. 
yeah it's clearly much much better guys so that is really heartening to see if you put in the ruby back runa bolts into the mix you can see that gives an 8.68 percent damage increase that's using a number of different assumptions and calculations which i've mentioned in a previous video and i'm actually making another video about it so look out for that as well so 8.68 percent on average keeping a number of assumptions in mind so obviously the ruby back runa bolts are much better than either Hex Hunter or SGB, but obviously that's only when you're considering attacking monsters above that LP threshold at which rubies hit 12Ks with their specs. Another way of looking at it is to look at the projected tier of the Hex Hunter bow. So if you just look at accuracy, it's basically equivalent to a tier 89.2 accuracy weapon, 89.2, 89.3. So that's slightly less than tier 90. However, if you look at its damage previously, before the buff, it was tier 94 damage. Now it's tier 97.3 damage rating, guys. And if you combine the two, both accuracy and damage rating, it turns out to be equivalent to a tier 92, pretty much exactly equivalent to a tier 92. Remember though that one, this does not consider any particular monster. And if you do consider a particular monster, so many other things come into play. And two, unless you're fighting a really tanky monster without any affinity boosts, you will most likely have a 100% hit chance with the Hex Hunter bow. And in which case, it is the best in slot bow because it's got 5% extra damage bonus as compared to a tier 90, whereas the tier 92 SGB only has a 1.35% extra damage rating. So this is a bow you might want to use anywhere where ruby background on bolts are out of the question, which isn't too many places to be fair. Um, and obviously it's free to use uh, technically because you're not using up any bolts for the specs. So that's all I'm gonna say for this. It's already been quite a waffle, but yeah, let's move on to the next update. All right, while we're here, let's have a look at the Aura Management Interface. A number of new changes have been made, some of which are actually pretty damn useful, to be fair. So one of the things they updated was that you can now auto-extend your auras using Vizwax. Let's see, how do you do this? There we go. If you look at settings, automatically extend unfavorite auras. Hmm. Automatically extend favorite auras. Okay, that's that's a good idea, actually. Uh, my favorite auras are the only ones I really use also, you can display a message when an aura has come off cooldown. That is phenomenal. Thank you, Jagex. Thank you very much. That's going to save a lot of time and make me more efficient on my insane final boss hunt. Hide warning messages. Yes, please. The number of times I haven't been able to activate an aura because I had to wait for the other one to finish. And uh, being in combat would prevent me from clicking the confirm message. <laughs> so, yeah pretty happy with that and apparently the interface will no longer stop keybinds from working i'm going to take jagex's word for that a number of quick binds have also been added to the ge and now i feel like this is such such an underrated update i mean the number of little frustrations i've had just having to wait click it one by one and then type it in and so on and then select whether you want to buy or sell damn all right so you can click each of the keybinds from 1 to 8 to instantly buy. And if you click control, it will allow you to sell instantly. So for example, let me try and sell on this slot. Keybind 5, control 5. I can't because I have to collect it first. So let me try and sell on this slot. Control 8. There you go. I can also collect all to inventory by pressing I. Nice. And pressing B will collect all to bank intuitive enough and nine will retrieve any lent item which is also intuitive so that's pretty much it for the g very small but useful updates hopefully that won't bug out at any point also they've added a new spell to the lunar book at level 81 if you've completed the dream mentor quest you will be able to use it so i'm just going to switch to lunas using my magic cape perk and there you go it's there magically spin five pieces of flax in the inventory five at once huh all right what will it do i can uh, i've got 10 so it should turn them all into bowstrings it does yes jagex that is a beauty you can also create a permanent mithril grapple which you can put into your tool belt not gonna lie that is one of the better 
updates that I haven't actually thought of ever before. So let me try and do that. I don't know which way I'm going to use it, but this is a combination of things you need for it to work apparently. Oh my god, what's the right combination? Maybe this is the right one. No, <laughs> what am I doing guys? Hmm, maybe I need to use a rope, perhaps. Wait, what? Oh, I need a mithril bolt, of course. Alright, let's third time lucky perhaps, maybe. Okay, will that work? No, it doesn't. Will that work? No, it doesn't. Will that work? Yes, it does. Will that work? No, it doesn't. Will that work? No, what? Okay, I'm really going to regret this, but here goes nothing. 500k. <laughs> I paid 499.999k for a Mithril crossbow, guys. Well, someone got rich if they merged these. Ah. <sighs> Dear oh dear, should have just made one myself. But laziness, laziness. Enhanced grappling hook. There we go, that's a permanent addition. Don't have to worry about it ever again. Or worry about it breaking or forgetting it or whatnot. Okay, I'm just going to use an inconsequential aura because I forgot to show you that the buff bar icon now shows exactly what the aura's effect is. So, let's just activate a random aura that I'm not going to use today. Dark magic, sure. So, I have... Oh, God. Oh, no! I wasted Bizwax! No, no, no! Oh, no. Why, Zen? Why? Defavorite it now. Anyway, it's uh, it's got a description saying what it does. So uh, I guess that's handy, similar to the Hex Hunter Bow buff uh, icon above your enemy. I'm removing that from my favorite right now. Um, yeah, see you later, mate. Uh, removing that from my favorites. Definitely re removing Supreme Call of the Sea. In case there's a glitch, even though you're not meant to be able to extend a Dwarven Instinct, in case there's a glitch that uses up all my Vizwax, I'm going to remove that as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully these are the only ones worth extending, even not even penance, to be honest. Just the six DPS auras and take away reverence as well. Don't need that. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. You know what? I'm going to remove Supreme. I don't extend those. I only extend my Berserker auras. So that's a ugly downside to this update. I wish you could select them one by one, but I guess that's what favoriting them is for. There we go. Now I don't have to worry about wasting any more Vizwax. They've also added more information to managing miscellaneous. Now you can see how much money you got left in your coffers. Also, additional resources are provided at midnight game time. So at reset instead of 24 hours since your last collection. So hopefully it should speed things up in terms of how long it takes before your coffers become full. So I'm going to just top up my coffers a little bit. I just did it yesterday. I need to top of my approval rating as well but uh, I can do that later on. There is a significant change to the way augmented items work. Now two augmented items that are exactly the same can be combined to create one augmented item. Essentially the object that has the higher XP is retained and the other one is consumed. Perks are retained or combined and only one of the two items being combined may have perks. Died objects can only be combined with the non-died variant and the die will remain after combining it. And uh, something I sh probably should have mentioned at the start is that this only works for items that degrade to an inert state. So you can combine them to retain their charges and not have to sort of use them separately. For example, Serenic, Malevolent, Tectonic, Refined Anima Core, PvP Armor like Superior, Zuriel, Statius, Wester and Morrigan and their died variants of all of those. So um, I don't know why I came to Ghouls. I guess I was going to try out this theory by augmenting something, but I don't have I don't have any T90 degrade to dust armor augmented at this point in time. So there's no point in me coming here. Next, Tiny Death can now be used as a familiar override, and so can the Rot's boss pets. About damn time, huh? I don't think the Rot's boss pets will show you the KC when you examine them, but they can be used as an override. Unfortunately, I don't have any of them purchased, but I can show you Tiny Death because I think that was a trim requirement. So uh, is that a follower pet? I think it might be. I think it might be. No, it's a companion pet. So override familiars, noise. The tool belt interface has been improved. They did tease this a few weeks ago. 
I think on Twitter or something, but it's much more useful now. You can see all the items laid out one by one. Uh, you can you can see what they do. Uh, you can see which items you still need without having to scroll side by side. I can store quite a few more items and I haven't. I should probably get on to doing that in case I need it in the future. So I guess it's laid out similar to the bank interface in the sense that they're all there and you can move to each one by just clicking on them or just scrolling. I don't have a C decide, I need to get that actually. And obviously in settings you can set up different things like your herbicide, your C decide and so on. That's the same as it was before. Okay, this has got to be one of the best updates of the day. Enduring glassites will now follow you. <laughs> That's a dream come true guys, it really is. Man, that used to be the most annoying part about doing glaciers, the fact that you had to manu manually click on the enduring one and whereas the others would follow you automatically. Damn, thank you Jagex. That is such a good update, man. I mean, seriously, seriously, that is such a good update. It's these little surprises that make my day, honestly. When I read this for the first time, I couldn't quite believe it. I had to actually come here to, to believe it. Hopefully I will get, uh, what will I get? Ah, oh, a shard of armador, not too bad. All right, I'm going to end the video here at Solgazes, one of the many monsters where the Hex on the Bow effect works, as you can see. I should probably be using Zealots because I have 100% accuracy here, and Zealots does more DPS wherever you have 100% accuracy, as compared to Curses and the Desolation Curse, for example. So anyway, that aside, there is another thing that they added in to elite soul gazers which now roll three times on the normal loot table the normal loot table does not include the hex hunter bow or the seekers charms so don't get your hopes up too much but i think it means you'll get triple loot as long as you don't get seekers charms or the hex hunter bow as a drop i think that's how it works uh, i wish i could test it but i can't get an elite to spawn correct me if i'm wrong guys but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys i'm enjoying the hex hunter bow update also a few of the other updates i missed out a few as well otherwise this video would have gone on and on and on so i want to end it here hope you enjoyed the little teaser and the stats to do with the hex hunter bow the updated hex hunter bow i'm going to do a full-on analysis like i said of the hex hunter bow also of the back criminal bots which i've actually been working on over the past few weeks i've already almost made that video uh, i was going to release it until they dropped this bombshell so now it's time to do this hex hunter analysis first and then i'll do the back criminal bots analysis and then maybe do a video comparing the two as well so i hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching and uh, if you were ever considering buying a hex hunter bow well, now's definitely the time, guys. I don't think they're going to buff it again. Having said that, though, Ruby back criminal bots are still the best as long as you're above the LP threshold. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to say, really.